I've got five more strategies to build momentum. And guess where I got them? I got them in Evan Carmichael's book, Momentum. We're looking in the five last advanced momentum strategies. And the idea here is, look at this. We've gone through the book. We have only a few pages left with five amazing strategies. So let's see what they are. So the third one, we go like this, and it is the best. When it's, So here, this is Evan's favorite word. It is the best. So if something gets hard, he stumbled on something, he's facing a wall. The first thing he says is, that's the best. So it shifts his, his mindset to something that is positive, and then it's so much easier to get back on his feet to come up with resourcefulness. My words here, I have to say, are excellent. I remember that I said that sometimes people are saying, oh, something's going on, and I say, oh, that's excellent. And that brings me to have a more positive outlook. And the uh, in the last few, uh, few years, I've been using, for example, if something's coming up, I say, hey, you know what? I'm living the dream. Because if you are aiming to live the dream, you become very resourceful to keep it as great as possible. Today's comment for me was a friend of mine asking me how my day was, but I said it was almost perfect. And if you think about it, most of us, this is what we aim for every day, to have a day that is almost perfect. What's, uh, what's in it if it's perfect day? We always want to grow in what we do. If you don't know me, my name is Alain Haber, and I'm, I'm a teacher in a high school, and I'm sharing with you information from Evan Carmichael's book called Momentum. And as I read, read his book, I always take notes on the thoughts, insight that I have. And I figured I'd share that with you as I use this as a resource to better understand Evan's book, but also as a way for me to remember the important key in uh, keeping momentum in what we do. So other information I have, this one here, is the fact that when something is happening, there are learning opportunities. Some learning opportunities we don't really want to deal with, or we would much rather not have to deal with that. The other issue, though, is that if you end up in your comfort zone all the time, that means that you are maybe happy in some ways, but you are not growing as much as it is possible. And I think that is much, uh, in from, uh, much quite true, especially if you think of um, his name is Tony Robbins. He does say that. Uh, um, uh, success is progress. Uh, the more you progress, the more you don't, you're not stagnating, and therefore, the more you can fulfill, uh, get the most fulfillment as possible in your life. So let's see what I what else I have here. Uh, it says here, and as I mentioned, these are thoughts that came to me. Uh, sometimes they are from Evan's book. Sometimes they're from other things that I read or I see. I have a saying here that God gives you problems and opportunities that you can handle. And the idea here is if you have, you come up with a situation, that means that they are on your path to become a better version of yourself. Now, I do understand that sometimes that things happen to good people. The idea though is we have to keep in mind that we have resources either with people around us we can be resourceful to see if we can, to the best of our knowledge, the best of what we know, get in a better position. And if we don't know how to do that, well, this is a learning opportunity. Let's see what else I have written here. And so the last few strategies are in amazing short chapters. And that's why I decided to have the last five uh, strategies with you today. The advanced momentum strategy number four goes like this. Not sharing your story is selfish. And here, the reason he mentioned that is you have to keep in mind that you have your own voice. When Evan, when sometimes I come up with a situation, I often hear Evan's uh, voice in my mind, and it's one way for me to get back on track. Uh, sometimes I have Elon's vo Elon, Elon um, Musk's voice when he says, well, sometimes you need to look at the plan and find a way to move it faster. Sometimes it's my voice because too often we have our own voice 
but sometimes we have our positive voice and sometimes our negative voice. And we need to make sure that we nurture our positive voice and see if we can um, find ways so that our positive voice overcomes our negative voice. Negative voice often is important. It tells us that maybe a threat may be happening or it makes sure that you are being safe, staying safe for yourself and others. But at some point, you, once you're safe and safety is always the first thing, then you can move forward. The next thing as well is that if you don't share your stories, what happened is you have to keep in mind that your path, your story, your journey, your learning, the lessons you've learned, these are all what made who you are as a person. That means that if you are keeping that story to yourself, there's a person out there that may be going through something similar that you've been through and would benefit from your story. And the idea here that it is selfish if you're not sharing your story is that everything you've learned, everything that made you who you are right now can be beneficial to someone else. Even if it's one person, helping one person is an amazing, uh, amazing feat to make the world a better place. I know that Evan has more than 3.5 million subscribers on his uh, YouTube channel, so he can touch so many more people. But when you talk to him, he often say that what he's looking for is talking to that one person, wanting one person to be better. So one more person, one more person, and that's how he's built his community. I look up to Evan for that. He's uh, done quite amazing. And here's, I wrote a sentence here that he said often, I don't know if I, you can see it here a little bit. It goes like this, how can I help? And I love this sentence because Evan starts with his interviews, uh, his coaching interviews uh, with others. Uh, if he meets someone that has a question for him, that's his first question, how can I help? It's amazing how it goes and it's in line with his book, which is called Built to Serve. Evan is amazing for that. There we go. And I have here, for um, people need to feel the connection. There you go. And people need to feel understood. If you want, and I'll have a, a quick story for you. If you think that some, there's a lot of people out there, we call them influencers sometimes, uh, advisors, mentors, and a lot, there's a lot of people wanting to help in different ways. And in some ways it's making it's part of their business to promote that. And the idea here is you cannot help anyone that are not willing to be helped. And for that to have someone open up, you need, for, you need them to feel understood. And once they feel understood, then there's a connection that can be built. And without connection, what happened is there might be words that are being said, but it's so far from uh, uh, the situation where someone can be transformed to a better person. And don't forget, whatever you are looking for, you're not just sharing information. You want people to feel transformed to a better self. And that's what you have to aim for. And I think that idea here that I have to go back there, it's amazing how my memory, it, you need to share your story because people connect with stories. And that's the best way to work on that. Advanced momentum strategy number five, your goals don't count until it's hard. There's a, there are some people that are amazing in what they do, but if they always do the same thing, what happened is there's not as much growth. I'll have to take it, for example, if you take some singers, uh, there's some singers that have, and they write a few songs, they have an album. And from that album, they go for a tour, and they go for a tour for a year or two because people are excited. But think about an artist that has put together a show and they sing the same show maybe, I don't know, 50 times, they or a hundred times over two years. What happens is it's amazing how great they become because they sing the same song, their voice gets better, they can read the crowd and it's amazing. On the other hand, often artists will say, okay, these are great songs, but I want to be able to create new songs. First of all, because they have other messages to give. 
But the other one is to stay in the same songs all the time. What happens is they don't grow, they stay in the comfortable zone. And that's why sometimes you see artists trying different genre from album to album so that they can feel that they're growing as well. And uh, here I have uh, so I, one person, uh, one book that I like, uh, it's uh, The Power of One More by Ed Milet. And he's saying that sometimes when you do the best you can, you say, okay, I've done all I can do, try to do one more. And he says that that applies for the gym, for example. You want to do uh, some sets, let's see if you can do one more set. If you cannot do sets and you have push-ups, do the, as many push-ups as you can and then try one more. If you have a business and you're doing cold calls, then do one more call. Uh, if you are, uh, let's see, if you are, um, let's see, let's see. If I am in a classroom and I'm helping students and sometimes uh, they ask questions, then you say, okay, well, allow for one more question so that you can help even more. The power of, of one more is quite amazing. And it goes to this idea that when it gets hard, then that's when it counts because it, you are pouring yourself in the situation. Here I have a saying, it goes like this, do not, do not let other people's lower standards impact you negatively. And that's from a line here, it goes like, this. so Evan in his book says, don't let your business partner's lower standard impact you like that. And my, my saying came like this, do not let other people's lower standard impact you negatively. Because I often tell my kids, if you are, if you have two people that are at the same level and one wants to be able to reach up, do better, or feel that they can do more, there are two ways of doing this. The first one is to learn, build knowledge and skills and help more people. And that person can go grow as a person. Another way is people to use negative thought and take their voice and lower the other people around them. When they lower the other people, they feel that they are more, but they're not more because of the original situation. They're more because they lowered other people's um, confidence, other people's uh, greatness. So my goal is always to tell people the best way to grow, and it's hard, is to build skills, do more, help more people. And that's how you can feel that you grow. That's, I think, the best way to go at it. And what else did I have this? I have, oh, the Evans, I have it here. He often says that we do hard things. And that's true. And if you keep in mind that we do hard things, then in your mind, you say, okay, I do hard things. So even if it gets difficult, it's not for you to be discouraged. It's for you to say, okay, let's see if I can do one more to feel that I'm progressing. That's important. I have here the advanced momentum strategy number six. We have two more to go. The first, the number six goes like this, move the brake line forward. And here, the idea here, then again, my note here is the power of the one more by Ed, Ed Milet. If you have a barrier and you know this is how far you can go, try to see if you can do one more to push it a little bit. For example, I have reports due at the end of this week, so I have to do some marking today. I did a lot today and I'm tired. I decided to do this video and I know that I'm gonna go upstairs and do an hour of marking. Why another hour? Is that that will allow me to move forward and help me for tomorrow. So let's see, what do I have here? I have, uh, let's see. Uh, so here, if you need to do something, you need to get out of your head and you need to take one more action because action is motion and it brings progress. This is the Tony Robbins again. And the idea here is too often we see limits and we don't notice that, that we are within our limits. But once you question those limits, that's when we can push them a bit forward. And this is the purpose of high school, actually. Their students are coming in, they're learning something new. Some of them are doing great. Some of others have to work hard. Other people, it takes several times to get it. But we are expanding what they know almost daily. Imagine that. Daily, you have students coming in and pushing their limits and what they know, what they can think, the conversation they can have, the new vocabulary to do so. This is quite amazing. 
And that's why I love reading books like Momentum from uh, Evan Carmichael, because the more I read, the more I can expand my ideas. And that is important, especially if you want to, uh, to move the break line forward. So let's see. Here he mentions again the trigger words. Uh, my, one of my trigger word is, okay, let's go, or that's excellent. I like that one. So what happened is when it is, when it gets hard, you can decide to let the limits hold you in or trying to say, okay, you hold the limits where they are and say, excellent. What can I do to be resourceful, to push them forward a little bit? And you know what? Even if it's this much, you're this much closer to your goal. And it's quite amazing. So here I have, for example, my YouTube channel for my science, uh, uh, for science, for junior scientists in high school. I have here that I want my channel to be, uh, to have 1600 subs by August, um, by August, 2022. So as you can see, I read this over the summer. So I want 1600. Let's see if I can have a quick look to see how many people I have at this time, just because I want to see it, I forgot. Uh, I have 2,100, 2,100, um, 2,100 subs at this time on my channel. And I'm going to put a link in the description below. It is one of my uh, most prized projects because I am, I am amazed on how many people I can help and the question, the science questions I can answer. We're going to do the last uh, advanced momentum strategy by Evan Carmichael in this book, Momentum. Let's see. It goes like this. Flip patience and impatience. So here, that's uh, the idea here. You have, so you need to be patient with the result. So that means that you're aiming for better health. You're aiming to be there for your family. You're there to prove what you can do uh, at your job. So you stretch, you grow, you learn, and you improve. You need to be patient for that. On the other hand, you have to be impatient with yourself. So what happened is you need to do one more if you can. You need to believe you can do this. You need to take the responsibility uh, for what you are doing, and you need to take action. So here, one of his strategy was the 595. You plan for 5%. And then for the rest, you take action and then you plan as you go. Because if you don't take action, you're not going to be anywhere. So what happens sometimes is that people are patient with themselves saying, oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Let's see if I can watch a little TV. I don't want to be doing much more today. So what happens is people are patient with themselves, but they are impatient with their health. They want to be healthy overnight. They want to have the best job overnight, all the salary. They want the family to be amazing overnight. And you, that's how you need to be flipping that. You need to be impatient with what you can control, which is you, your thoughts, your idea, what you believe in. And you need to be patient with everything else, knowing that if you take action, you take the steps, you're going to be able to move forward. I believe in that. So here, the other one here I have, so here Evan has a page with, that says, become patient with the results and impatient with yourself. It's quite important. Um, voila, and here I have another saying say, that says, be patient with the journey and the process and the business. Um, so often we say that you need to appreciate the journey uh, and not necessarily just the end goal. And that is basically, the last momentum strategy habits that we've learned with Avid. It's been an amazing journey. This is the book I decided to look into. I'm going to find another book at some point and read it with you. The idea here is to learn from amazing authors. And thank you, Evan, for what we've done. I'm going to put here two links. On this side, I'm going to put the Milestone Journey playlist. It is my journey where I'm posting my thoughts every day on how to grow uh, as a person, and I'm going to put on the other side a link to one specific video. I'm going to put the one where it was the planning 595. I talked about it in the video. I'll see you in the next video. You'll see it's great.